The Zeitgeist Movement Defined Essay 13 Post-Scarcity Trends, Capacity, and Efficiency Part 1 Quote The world's present industrial civilization is handicapped by the coexistence of two universal, overlapping, and incompatible intellectual systems. The accumulated knowledge of the last four centuries of the properties and interrelationships of matter and energy and the associated monetary culture which has evolved from folkways of prehistoric origin. End quote. M. King Hubbard. Evaluating Design. Examining the surface of Earth today, a network layer of communities, industrial centers, transport routes, recreational areas, agricultural systems, and the like dominate much of the landscape. Whether intended as a total system construct or not, this result at any given point in time constitutes the appearance of a topographical design. Yet on the other hand, given that this resulting design today is actually a consequential amalgamation of mostly business dynamics, moving money around for personal or group self-interest, based around decision-making mechanisms such as profit, cost efficiency, and the prevailing logic surrounding property relationships. It could also be argued that what has manifest is actually not a design at all. Rather, it is rooted in a mechanism that has created the appearance of design ex post facto, since the structural outcome recognized was not fully anticipated as a whole prior to its construction. In other words, the technical order we see in the world today is mostly the result of financial processes that have little to no perception of larger scale structural outcomes. It is more of a proxy system, and while there are some relative exceptions, such as the placement of highways, pipelines, and the like by funded city planners who simply must take a broad physical view to be functional, even those circumstances are often working around pre-existing property claims and other forms of interference which tend to reduce design efficiency on the whole. This is an interesting observation as once it is recognized that our society operates without a large-scale preconception of its own physical design, one might begin to realize the enormous level of unnecessary waste and technical inefficiency inherent to such a short sided process. To consider this more so, two points are worth considering. A. Existing yet unapplied solutions and B. Broad conception versus spontaneous conception. A. Existing yet unapplied solutions. This first point concerns the tendency of many new innovations for problem resolution to go unapplied within the current economic tradition. If further life-improving methods or technologies have not found their way into a system within a respectable amount of time, or at all, after general validation, we can rightly assume there are inefficiencies, if not deficiencies, with the very process of economic incorporation and development. In other words, this delay between proven solutions and their application in the real world gauges the ability of the socioeconomic system to adapt properly to improved methods and applications. If for some reason the social order in question is not able to incorporate such new means to further ecological balance, improve public health, solve problems, and increase prosperity, then there is likely a structural problem inherent. B. Broad conception versus spontaneous conception. Secondly, from a strictly formulaic viewpoint, direct total system considerations will always be more efficient and effective than spontaneous generation by processes blind to the final outcome or purpose. In other words, as gestured before, a basic good such as a car has a design that is conceived of in advance before physical production. Once this design is decided upon, it is then followed by ap applying real life materials and processes to create the actual physical product. This may seem obvious to most as a logical process, but the relevance of such preconception is often lost when it comes to larger order contexts. 
We have to wonder what the outcome would be if we applied the pseudo-democratic market process of bidding, buying, and selling for short-term profit if even possible, on such a scale, to the creation of high-integrity goods systems such as an airplane, computer, car, home, or the like. While today the resources, labor, and sub-component systems of these items are certainly in play in the open market, the design itself is not. The design is relegated necessarily to the discipline of science overall. It could be said that a line is intuitively drawn in this way between what is susceptible to monetary opinion and what is tangibly needed to keep some basic level of technical system integrity. Please note that this notion of design is not to be confused with subjective style interests. Design as used here is not an aesthetic consideration but a technical one. Imagine hypothetically if people bid and offered for the physical design construction of a house in each tiny physical detail, ignoring scientific principles. In other words, instead of referencing the basic laws of physics and the natural science that defines the core structural integrity of any building, we let the market decide, with everyone buying and selling such premises for their personal gain, regardless of their technical understanding. Of course, such an idea is truly absurd in such abstraction, and most reading this probably can't even imagine such an irrational interplay. However, this is exactly what is occurring as a result of our economic system in many other less obvious ways. For example, on the macroeconomic scale, the global commercial network created by what is termed globalization with its basis in cost efficiency, which among other things, utilizes cheaper labor in often distant regions, while wasting large amounts of energy sending resources all over the world and back, reveals this loss of efficiency as well. From the perspective of preconceived design, given the more logical possibility of localization of labor, production, and distribution in most all cases. Globalization, in its current form, is highly inefficient compared to other possibilities. This is not to deny that globalization and this integration of international economies has generally been a productive occurrence within the evolution of economics. In that context, it has served global industrial development fairly well. However, if we step out of the box of market logic and examine how we could directly design a more technically efficient and localized set of systems within the global setting, we find that the current method is not only inferior, it is rather offensive. On the microeconomic scale, this can be exemplified with respect to the inefficiency inherent to the quality of basic good components also due to the practice of cost efficiency and the inherent interest to produce the so-called best at the lowest cost, which quite simply does not produce the best at all. For example, a proposed schematic design of, say, a laptop computer might be reasonably efficient technically. However, if the actual materials used to generate that final good are relatively poor in quality, no matter how intelligent the overall basic design, it will incur relative weakness and will likely break down more rapidly than if the same design was also optimized to use the most appropriate materials from a technical point of view, rather than those materials decided upon as per the proxy of market efficiency. Another example is the market phenomenon of proprietary technology. While we see ostensibly an enormous amount of variety in the world today with respect to good production, a closer look shows a vast and wasteful multiplicity, along with problematic structural incompatibility between producers, components of the, sum, <coughs> components of the same good genre. In other words, competing corporations today tend to create custom systems, such as a computer system, and its required components. 
that are incompatible with the developments of other producers in that same good genre. Universal compatibility, or lack thereof, is yet another example that the byproduct of this market proxy game and the larger order system inefficiency and waste is enormous. This pattern is also common to a generational development of existing commercial product systems, aka models, such as when improvements are made to a given machine, unnecessarily making obsolete older components of that machine in the interest of assuring further purchases from the consumer. It is critical to note that there is no such thing as a single product in the closed system of Earth with respect to planetary resources and their use, nor are any product designs or production methods existing in a vacuum. Each good and its process of production is merely an extension of the whole of industry. Hence the materials utilized along with designs find their true context only with respect to the whole of industry and resource management on all levels. This understanding forces the constant need to view industry and hence economics itself as a single system process to ensure maximum technical efficiency. So with this in mind, coupled again with the first point regarding the question of why certain realities are not put into practice, even though they are clearly doable at a given point in time, this essay will examine socially relevant technological trends and design capacities which, if applied properly, could radically transform the world into a post-scarcity, highly abundant condition that would alleviate the vast majority of the world's problems we see as commonplace today. Moreover, it is a conclusion of TZM that the current model not only disallows or too slowly incorporates new advents in efficiency due to the very nature of business and its tendency to preserve inefficiency for the sake of an establishment's profit the very detached and segregated nature of market activity inherently ignores larger order considerations to source and solve problems or accelerate improvement. Design Efficiency if we break down the everyday complexity of our lives today, dissecting what interplay is most critical to human survival, st sustainability, and prosperity, we might find three basic things, science, natural law, and resources. Science is the mechanism for discovery and validation. Natural law is the pre-existing rule set which we are continually learning about via science and necessarily adapting. While resources exist in the context of both raw earthly materials and the power of the human mind to comprehend, with respect to the development of design, these three attributes are naturally indispensable to each other. Furthermore, the term industrial design for the purposes of this essay will be used to denote the process of economic oriented industry in all its facets from singular good creation to the total order of the global economy in form. The history of industrial design is, in many respects, the true history of economic development, as our ever-emerging scientific understandings generate logical inference with respect to how best utilize our resources and time. The global landscape, both physical and cultural, has undergone perpetual change. In this context, the core interest of industrial design is essentially efficiency, and it could be argued that there are three central efficiency contexts related. A, labor efficiency, B, material efficiency, and C, system efficiency. <clears throat> a, labor efficiency has a unique history. Since the early 20th century, there has been a relatively rapid transition from the dominant use of human and animal muscle as the source of labor power to the use of powered machines. This phenomenon, which is termed mechanization, was able to elevate the workforce from much strenuous toil to operate in more of a position of tool utilization. However, by the end of the 20th century, this pattern continued to advance 
where such machines were not only capable of moving heavy loads and performing complex physical acts, they were also merging with computerization and degrees of artificial intelligence, AI, and hence were able to make decisions as well. In short, the accelerating trend today has proven that these modern machines are now greatly surpassing in productivity the vast majority of the actions historically held by human beings. And there appears to be no slowing down of this trend. Overall, TZM views this trend as suggesting a powerful means by which the human species can further maximize its productive ability to meet the needs of all human beings, while generating a level of human freedom never before seen, if adapted properly. B. Material efficiency is how well we utilize the raw materials of the earth. Materials science also has a unique history unto itself, with each period of time discovering new patterns and possibilities. Metallurgy, a domain of materials engineering that studies the physical and chemical behavior of metallic elements and their mixtures, was a very important development historically, enabling a vast spectrum of possibility through the creation of compounds and alloys. For example, the term Bronze Age, which was the period in Europe of around 3200 to 600 BC, is characterized by the common use of copper and its alloy bronze for many purposes. However, perhaps the most important discovery in materials science understanding, and perhaps one of the most important discoveries in human history, was the set of chemical elements that comprise all matter as we know it. Recognized by most as organized via the periodic table, 118 elements have been identified as of 2013, with about 92 known to occur naturally on Earth. In short, these chemical elements are the building blocks of everything we experience as tangible in the world around us, and each respective atom has certain properties and hence idiosyncratic applications. This knowledge, which is extremely new relative to the totality of human understanding, has not only allowed for a deeper understanding of how chemistry can work to create an incredibly vast range of materials for increasingly efficient industrial use, it has also facilitated a powerful understanding of the very nature of matter itself and prospects for manipulations at the atomic scale. Nanotechnology, which is very much in its infancy, appears quite concrete in its theoretical basis of assembling and disassembling different materials and even systems of materials, i.e. goods themselves, from the atomic level up and down. Of course, as profound as that is, the current, relatively crude state of nanotechnology applies mostly in the context of what are called smart materials, or metamaterials, as will be touched upon later in this essay. The current state and trends of materials, science, hold profound possibilities for the present and future. System efficiency is likely the most crucial and important of all concepts, for as abstract as it may seem, everything we know of is a system itself or an interaction of two or more systems. Perhaps the best way to express system efficiency is to consider any commonplace act and think about how that act could either be either reduce waste or increase productivity on any and all levels, not just within the context of the perceived singular act itself. System perspectives are rather obscure to most since we tend to view most functions and processes within the bounds of their intended purpose only in a categorical manner. For example, when we consider a modern fitness center, aka gym, with people exercising on various machines in one location, we tend to think only of the purpose of that institution and hence how to better facilitate the health interests of those people using those machines, etc. We rarely think more broadly and propose what if all those people peddling and pushing and pulling 
had that exerted energy run into a conversion system where the building itself could be powered in whole or in part by that energy in the form of electricity. This manner of thought stands at the heart of a systems theory type worldview. Perhaps a useful way to think of this network perspective is through the synergy of nature itself. <clears throat> In the Earth's biosphere, minus current human interference, there is virtually no such thing as waste. Virtually everything we find in nature is deeply integrated and in balance due to the refining nature of evolution itself. This is a powerful observation, and the term biomimicry is worth mentioning in this context, as in many ways our development as a species has been to learn from the natural processes in existence already, even though we appear to have decoupled greatly in many ways. Hence working to facilitate the most optimized integration we can, ideally reusing everything on all levels, just as nature does, should be a societal goal to ensure sustainability and efficiency. Established and potential trends. There are two broad, broad basic trends or realities to consider in the world today. For the purposes of this essay, we will refer to them as established and potential. Established trends are the socio-economic trends in play at the time of this writing, and these, in the context of public health and ecological balance, are shown to be almost entirely negative. The potential trends, on the other hand, reveal life-improving and balance-creating possibilities that could occur if larger-order social changes were made. As noted before, these two trends arguably appear to operate in a system contradiction of each other. In the essay titled Social Destabilization and Transition, an in-depth look at the current state of societal affairs will be addressed in detail. However, let it be stated that the efficiencies defined, defended, and suggested here are not done so simply to show how much better the world could be, as though what we are doing today is still okay. On the contrary, these basic observations actually demand alignment if we intend to maintain stability in our world given its current degrading patterns. <clears throat> with a population expected to reach over 9 billion by 2050, with reported trends of looming food, water, and energy shortages, these suggestions not only seek to improve, but to actually change course Overall, it is the view of TZM that if these current so-called established trends persist with the short-sighted market-based practice and all the characteristics that go along with it, human culture will not only not achieve the positive application of the potential trends expressed, increased destabilization will continue to occur. <clears throat> 